This video is about the side splitter theorem compared with the mid-segment theorem. It's um, useful to do these side by side because they are easily confused. Notice how similar the pictures look. They both involve a triangle that has a segment inside that's parallel to one side. They both have that. Um, but for the side splitter theorem, that's all we have is a segment that is parallel to a side. Whereas for the mid-segment theorem, we have this additional information that we have midpoints. All right, if the segment joins midpoints, then we can use the mid-segment theorem. We'll, we will know that we have mid, uh, midpoints because the segments on either side will be congruent. Now, for the side splitter theorem, um, which does not require midpoints, you can uh, notice that the, uh, the segments are proportional. So I can write A over B is equal to X over Y. Now, for the mid-segment theorem, um, where you have the midpoints that are being connected, then um, the situation is that the, uh, the segment is half the size of the parallel side. So in other words, if I double the mid-segment, and uh, this uh, little white segment is called the mid-segment when it connects midpoints, if I double that, it should equal the other side. So notice that um, the two theorems deal with completely different parts of the triangle. For the side splitter theorem, we're dealing with the sides of the triangle. All right. Um, for the mid-segment theorem, we're dealing with the mid-segment and the parallel side. All right. So when you're doing the side splitter theorem, we are not going to be doing anything um, with this white segment in the middle. Okay. So every time you see a problem like this, where you have a segment inside the triangle that's parallel to a side, you have to stop and ask yourself, um, should I be doing the mid-segment theorem, or will I simply do the side splitter theorem? Okay, um, so the question is, really, are these midpoints? All right, are these midpoints? Uh, and the answer here is no because we have a 6 and an 8. If this was a midpoint, it would be like 6 and 6, or 8 and 8. So we cannot do the mid-segment theorem. Um, instead, we will simply do the side splitter theorem, um, where we will make a fraction out of these two, and we'll make another fraction out of these two, because these segments are proportional. So for example, I can just simply do 6 over 8, is equal to 18 over x. And I can use this to find the value of x. OK, so um, 6 over 8 reduces down to 3 over 4. And that's going to equal um, 18 over x. And then it's time to cross multiply. So if I do this diagonal, um, that's going to give me 3x. If I do this diagonal, I'm multiplying. Um, let's see, 4 times 18. That's 72. And then I would need to divide both sides by 3. And that's 24. OK, that was the easy part. Um, now, we still need to find the value of y. Um, now, we can't do something as, as easy as this, uh, because this is not the mid-segment. So I can't just say, well, if I double this, it'll equal that. That's only for the mid-segment. And the side splitter theorem does not apply to the parallel sides. So I can't say um, 6 over 8 is equal to uh, 28 over 4y plus 8. 
all right? The side splitter theorem is only for the sides, not the bases of the triangle. So instead, excuse me, the only thing I can really do is um, draw these triangles separately. So in order to find y, we, re we really need to look at this as two separate triangles, the small triangle inside of a bigger triangle. And the safest thing to do is to go ahead and draw those triangles separately like I've done right here. Um, that will help you avoid all kinds of confusion. So looking at the small triangle, you see that I have 8 and I have x and I have uh, 4y plus 8. Okay, now let's see if we can get the sides for the bigger triangle. Now this is the easy part. Up here we have this big old 28. Now the sides. Um, what about the left side? Uh, you probably can see that I'm going to have to add these together. All right, um, 6 plus 8, so that's 14. All right, what about this side? All right, I also need to add these together. But x plus 18, that's all I can do is just write x plus 18. So we will just use what we know about similar triangles in order to uh, solve for y. So we just need to set up a proportion. And I've already drawn it so that corresponding sides are in the same position. So that should make it pretty easy. So for example, I know that um, these are corresponding sides here and here. So I can just make a fraction out of them. So I can do, um, so let's see, I'm going to call this old and I'll call this new. Doesn't really matter. In fact, you know what, I think I'm going to switch it up. I would rather, uh, I'd rather have the variable in the top, it just makes me happier. So I'm going to switch it up and call this one new and this one old. I'm just labeling new and old because when we write our proportions for similar figures, um, if we always do new over old is equal to new over old, it will help us avoid mistakes. Uh, that will help us make sure we're always doing it uh, the same way both times. So. I will do new over old, so that will give me, um, let's see, let me see if I can squeeze this in over on the side. That's going to give me um, 4y plus 8 over 28 is equal to. Um, okay, now for my other fraction, I need all numbers, no more variables. So I'm not going to mess with the x and the x plus 18. But instead, I'm going to consider the 8 and the 14. And again, I'm going to do new over old. So that's going to be 8 over 14. And I will use this in order to find y. So this is going to give me 4y plus 8 over 28. Um, this reduces down to 4 over 7. So I always like to do that. And then I cross multiply. So um, if I do this diagonal, all right, multiplying, then that is going to give me 7 times 4y plus 8 equals. And then if I do this diagonal, multiplying again, I'm going to need to know what 4 times 28 is real quick. So 4 times 28. That's 112. So little distributive property happening. So that's going to be 28y plus 56 is equal to 112. Go ahead and subtract 56 from both sides. And that will give us 28y is equal to Uh, 56 and then when you divide by 28 and squeeze it in here uh, 
and that is 2. So we discover that y is equal to 2. So that is what you have to do to find y. All right, again, we could not do the mid-segment theorem and just go double this is equal to that because this is not a mid-segment. Okay, and we could not use the side splitter theorem um, because the side splitter theorem only applies to the sides, not the, not the parallel parts. So you had to fall back on your good old-fashioned similar triangle skills. All right, number six is different and easier. Um, can I do, uh, well, am I going to do the side splitter theorem or am I going to use the mid-segment theorem? This time I can do the mid-segment theorem. See the uh, tick marks? These show that the uh, segments on either side are congruent. All right, so that means that I have midpoints here and here. Um, so that means this is a mid-segment. So that tells me that um, the mid-segment is going to be half the length of the parallel side. So if I double the mid-segment, it's going to equal the other side. So I can use that to my advantage. Um, so if I double the mid-segment, so if I do 2 times 4y plus 8, that should equal the parallel side. That should equal 28. So a little distributive property, and I have 8y plus 16 is equal to 28. Subtract the 16, and you have 8y is equal to... 12. And then if you uh, divide both sides by 8, you discover that y is equal to, um, first let me just reduce this fraction. So this would be, um, both of these are divisible by 4, so that would be 3 over 2. Okay, or as a decimal, that would be 1.5. Okay, so that's y. What about x? Um, well, you don't have to do any calculations for x. Uh, the tick marks tell the story. Uh, these segments are congruent, so of course that means that x is simply equal to 18. All right, number seven is sort of a bonus problem that doesn't actually have anything to do with the uh, mid-segment theorem or the side splitter theorem. So um, it really has to do with isosceles triangles. Uh, if you have an isosceles triangle, all right, that means that you have two sides that are congruent. These angles are called the base angles. And the base angles are also congruent. Okay, um, so we have two isosceles triangles in this picture. So because I've got um, these congruent sides right here, that makes these the base angles that go with them. So these base angles are congruent. So if this is x, um, then this is also x. These are the same. Now, um, all of the angles in a triangle have to add up to 180. So looking at this top triangle, you know that x plus x plus 50, all of that has to add up to 180. So in other words, 2x plus 50 has to equal 180. So if you subtract 50 from both sides, then we see that 2x is going to equal 130. So then if I divide both sides by 2, um, that's going to be 65. Okay, um, so that's it. So this would be 65, and this would also be 65. And you can just kind of check your work 
Um, and notice that if I added all these up, if I do 65 plus 65 plus 50, of course it all adds up to 180. So it adds up to 180, our base angles are congruent as they need to be, so it makes sense. Um, and let me just change colors, but we're going to be doing the same thing for this triangle down here. Okay, so now looking at it this way, so if I've got these two congruent sides, that makes these base angles. And these base angles are going to be congruent. So I don't need to do any fancy calculations this time. Uh, these are simply congruent. So that just tells me that y is going to equal uh, 71 degrees. OK, I, I guess I should have said 65 degrees for x as well. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this video. Go ahead and click here in the red apple to watch the next video. Click in the green apple to subscribe or click the yellow apple for the full playlist.